The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. We are offices are in Tucson, Arizona this week because we want to be in an area where it's nice and warm and we don't have any protests out here, which is pretty good, at least not yet. So that's what we're looking at. I posted a chart for the DAX and the FTSE. You can see both of those have moved up uh, a little bit. That's important, I think, because the rest of the world is going up also. The one thing that I wanted to point out to you comes from Australia, folks. This is really an interesting one. This is a, a firm that uh, they deal with uh, uh, trading. At, what do they call those things? Oh, shucks. Uh, I can't remember the name of it, but it's a trade. It's a trading company like uh, Merrill Lynch or whatever. But anyway, you'll notice that when they when they on the opening part of this, it tells you that 73 percent of their customers are losing money. Now that is that is really an informative piece of uh, marketing information, and the reason why most people lose money at this is because they don't know what they're doing when they come into it. But the people that can stick with it over a few months, a few years, whatever it takes, you will make it. Because if they didn't, then you know this there wouldn't be a business at all. But a lot of people do make it. It just takes time. You just don't know when, you know, you can turn the corner when you finally see the light, like Archimedes said, Eureka. So you just got to keep going for it. But I, when I saw this ad, someone sent it to me and they said, "Is this true?" Actually, the number is quite, uh, you know, quite in line with what uh, Mark Douglas did. Uh, you'll notice it says 73%. Well, when I first met Mark in '83, he had um, access. Uh, Merrill Lynch had hired him to see why 80% of their commodity people were losing money. 80%. And he had, I think, over it was over 10,000 accounts that he had. He didn't have the names of the accounts, but he had all the trading. And uh, he went through all of that to see, you know, why people were losing. And the two main reasons that he came up with is one, their 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 stops were too close. In other words, they were micro trading. And the second reason is they didn't have any stops in at all. In other words, they would just put something on and if it didn't work, you know, they'd blow out and then, you know, that was about it. But uh, of those accounts, the ones that had been with them longer, you could see that there was a, uh, a trend that the more the people stayed in the market, they would make it. So if you're out there and you're still struggling, you will make it. It's just a matter of time. You've got to find that point where, you know, like Archimedes, you know, Eureka, I found it. And that's my point was, you know, when I looked at the ABCD pattern, that was enough to, for me to say, yeah, that doesn't work all the time, but it works some of the time. And then later on, I got Gartley and stuff like that. The second question that I got over the weekend was, is this market any different than any market you've ever seen before? And I have to say, folks, the answer to that is no. We saw this one other time. In the dot-com bubble in 2000, this was much, much a greater in 2000 than it was now. If you remember, that's 20 years ago. It's hard to believe, but most of you people I've known for over 20 years. Well, not most, but some of it. Folks, you, you, they, they would come out, companies that didn't even have any income coming in. If they had a 10% a increase in sales, they could double in price. I remember some of these stocks, they're no longer with us. WorldCom, uh, Global Crossing, you know, it was just so many of them that you just don't, uh, it's just incredible, the, the number, I can't remember all of them, it was really amazing, but they, they were, uh, what was it, Sycamore Networks, I mean, there were so many of them, you just can't think of it, but that, that we will probably not see again um, in my lifetime, you, you young folks will see it again, but that was an incredible time, I mean, it was, uh, you know, you, you can't really describe it unless you live through it. And I, I remember in March, the, uh, the, the, Dow, the Dow topped in January of uh, 2000, but the NASDAQ didn't top until uh, March of 2000. Actually, March 24th, I believe, was the uh, 23rd was the high. On the 24th, I was at the Money Show in San Francisco, 
And the people were walking around with their equity runs showing how much money they had made. I mean, it was incredible. And then when I had my, my little talk there, there were about 250 people in the room. And, uh, I, you know, they were just talking all the time. When, you know, if you're a speaker, the one thing that is absolutely distracting and nauseating is when people are talking and not listening to you. Not that, that's what I say, anything important, but it's very, it's very irritating. And I, and I finally, you know, I, I don't put up with it. I don't need it. And so I got up on the table and I said, look, I, st- I, st- I stamped my feet on the table and the, my, my friends that were with me, they were laughing so hard. Anyway, I said, boys and girls, I said, you don't realize what's happening. I said, there's a train coming down the track. I said, uh, you know, and it's going to run right over you. You know, that's it. You know, you're going to be in big trouble. And, uh, you know, I gave him some other stuff and gave the speech and we stopped talking and I made it through the hour. One lady called me afterwards uh, the next two or three days. I told her to put a stop under the low of Friday, March the 23rd. I said, if you go below that, we're going to go a lot lower. And, of course, Monday morning it did that. I think she called me on a Wednesday and uh, thanked me for it. And I said, well, did you get out? She said, oh, no. She said, I'm just looking for another buying opportunity. I, I figured it probably came in on this uh, today, so I was ready to buy. And I said, well, I think you ought to wait a little bit. Never did hear from her again. But that was the high in the market, and it gave 85% of it back. Folks, there is a, di- there is a giant danger Warning signal signal out there, folks. I, I, I mean, a big one. We've seen that fear index before, the greed index, but this is the one you want to pay attention to. This is the put-call ratio. Uh, this is a number of calls bought versus a number of puts. Look at the bottom of the stock market. You see way up there at the top when it was a 1.275, the ratio? Okay, that was the bottom of the market on, on March the 13th. Okay, now look where we are now. We're at 0.4. In other words, point four, folks. This has never been there before. So uh, something's going to happen. Might not be today. It might not be tomorrow. But it's a coming. And so be really careful. I'm watching the shorter term patterns. I saw the one in the Nasdaq last night that Maria was pointing out to us this morning. That was a really nice one. And and the Nasdaq has been the leader of the market all the way. Now it closed really strong on Friday, but it's acting. You know, every time it goes up, it drops right away. The other thing is open interest is dropping, folks. We have less open interest in the S and P than we did a month ago. And that's, you know, if you, if you, and it's been going up a month. So that's all short covering. There's no new buying coming in there. If it did, you would see it. And that's, uh, that's it. I think it's very important. So now that I'm off my soapbox, if you'd like to call in 877-927-6648, uh, we have the Shane man coming on today, which will be good. And uh, I think I've, I've told you about the other folks that'll be on So it'll be, uh, oh, I think I I should run through it. We've got, uh, tomorrow's going to be Dr. David Paul, one of the mentors of Tom Hugard. Uh, Stan Harley will be on Wednesday. 11, we got Bill Chapman. And 12 will be a day off. I will not be here on Friday the 12th. It's time for oil change over at the doctor's office. So I have to go in early in the morning and get all that stuff taken out. That's the one good good thing about the... uh, uh, oh, oh, wait a minute. Uh, uh, Terry's saying there's a three drive pattern on Apple on the uh, four on the on, on four hour chart. Terry, I'm going to post that. Oh, Terry's posted it. Let's just take a look. Shut the front door, Terry. Bada bing, bada boom. You've got it. That's it, brother. Uh, let's. That's a beauty. I'm going to post it too because this is one of the things. I'm going to change the format here, uh, folks. I get tired of just talking about the pattern. Oh. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading 
trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today, and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, we're back, folks, and uh, we're going to take a look at this uh, three drive to a top pattern in Apple. It's over a four hour period. Four hour charts taking us back into uh, mid May. You'll notice that we are making a new highs now in Apple. We're trading at 331, it looks like. The trade would, that I would like to look at would be to sell Apple at 332 and 0.99, just a little bit below 333. And you only have to risk about 1%, folks. You risk about $3. You can trade a $300 stock for. Um, you know, just uh, you know, just about three dollars. Now, a lot of you folks know that I work with John Jameson over across the pond quite a bit. Uh, he's a student from 18 years ago, probably one of the smartest human beings I've ever met, and very well read and, and just a super nice guy. But he it has a way of trading options that is just absolutely spectacular. I I've never traded options before. I've you know I buy a put, buy a call. You know, uh, once in a while, usually they don't they don't work, but they're very cheap, so it's not a big deal. But the way he does it is gets leverage like I've never seen before. I mean, it's just absolutely incredible. I'm going to have uh, some more information on that probably in a few weeks or months. But uh, I was just blown away about how he did this. Uh, we'll be looking at Apple today, but uh, the level is uh, 333, I believe, and uh, I don't know where it's trading right now, but we'll be able to see what's on. The, the trouble. Is uh, he doesn't like to, you know, he doesn't like to be uh, on a show where he's, uh, uh, you know, has to uh, answer questions and stuff. Not that he's not good at it, he just he doesn't enjoy it. He'll do a podcast and stuff like that, but uh, we've actually done a book together. It's an audio book. 
that we'll be bringing out very shortly. And it basically proves, you know, the, that the ABCD pattern works. And then it also there's a, a little trading system there using the opening price. There's another thing that you have going for you today in Apple is there's going to be a lot of emotional enthusiasm. So uh, keep an eye on that. Um, so what we're, we'll be looking at here would be doing a strategy to get short the Apple at around that 333 level. I haven't uh, seen where it's trading lately, but uh, let's just uh, get it up here. Maybe we can uh, see where we are here. We're trading at 330. The high so far has been 331.56. So at 333, I would certainly be interested in doing that. So it's going to open, it looks like, around uh, 330 and change. Now, here's, you know, I'm going to change the format of what we do each day, folks, because you know you get tired of just looking at these patterns. So what I'd like to do is, starting today, we're going to just look at this to see if uh, to see the uh, uh, you know it's really uh, you know it's <laughs> you made me lose my train of thought, Doctor Bill. Just a second here. Now I'm going to change the format a little bit because I get you know it gets a little boring for you guys for me to just show you all this is an A B C D Mark Mark Douglas used to joke with me about that I mean he made a <laughs> he loved the A B C D patterns he he really did he he just couldn't believe how simple it was but every time I say A B C D I can hear Mark right behind me saying well there's an A B C D and by golly they only work about 70% of the time but by golly you're not going to get those kind of odds in Las Vegas so keep that in mind so Anyway, uh, this Floor Traders Handbook that we've done has really got a lot of good information in it, but it basically proves mathematically how the why the ABCD patterns work. The thing is that the key to that is you've got to be able to see what's happening at the C level. In other words, when that market makes its correction and then has the C level. That's the key, because if it comes out of there really strong, you can bet your uh, bottom dollar or the last two cents or maybe a penny and a half that the CD leg is going to be a big extension of the AB leg, usually 1.27 or 1.618. And if it goes past 1.618, that's when it, the market really runs. So, you know, those are the numbers that you have to pay attention to. That's why you're looking at Apple here at that 333 level. If it gets sh sharply above that, and I'm saying 1% at 336, you would certainly be wrong. Now, if you did an option, uh, you know, did an option strategy like, uh, you know, sell a call, buy a put, you know, do one of those uh, iron condors or butterfly patterns that they use in options, you can get into that and hold it for several days. Uh, the, uh, Mr. Z is asking, is it possible that the S&P or NASDAQ made a full moon top on Friday? Yes, it, the NASDAQ certainly could have, but I believe the SP has made a higher high by just a little bit. Uh, I really, there's a possibility that all I, all I know, Mr. Z, is you just look at that put call ratio, and when we look at that again in a few days, you say, gee, why didn't I see that down there? And well, you just got to be ready for it. You know, I don't know where it's going to top. So what I do is I go down to a 15 minute, just like I'm doing an Apple. I'm not doing anything fancy, you know. So I'm just looking at Apple now. Apple and and Microsoft make up how much? 20 percent of all the Nasdaq, two stocks, Microsoft and Apple. So watch how they're doing. You know, the you know, my you know, Apple's up a little bit, but it's not it's not screaming into new high grounds. You know, but but how do you how do you sell a stock that uh, the whole world loves? Well, you don't find one that they the one that they don't love. You know, that's uh that's find the easy ones. You know, that's the main thing that you want. To, when you when you play in a poker tournament, uh, and you you get at a table where there's some really great players, you know, you have to be really careful careful. But if you're at a, if you're at a table where there's not any really great players that's where you that's where you can build up your stacks but when you get when you start playing with somebody that's really good you better be very careful because that's that's really uh, it's very very important to remember it's the same thing in sports folks you know when a football team has to play the number one team you know they're they they know that they're the underdog so they got to play a little harder that's why you know teams that go undefeated are so spectacular because they're the, they're the, they got a target on their back all the time so you know that's the main thing the trading is simple but it's not easy and it takes a long time usually a year or two to really get to a level where you're comfortable with 
with what you're looking at. And that's all I'm saying. So we'll be watching Apple here this morning. I don't know what the last price was, if someone would be so kind to take a look at it. We'll have Shane on in another five minutes. He's got some really good information about the Fed, Fed juice coming up, and also uh, some of the you know things that are making the market jump like this. So it's going to be you know quite interesting. But we are in that area, folks, with that put call ratio like that. That's a giant. That's not like the fear index. The fear index is an emotional thing. You can't gauge that one. This is dollar. This is real dollar money. This is really do real dollar money. So we'll try to sell that apple at uh, 33, 32.90 is what we're going to try to sell apple on it. And we'll risk about a buck. And uh, well, you actually should risk three dollars because uh, you got to risk one percent on a on a three hundred dollar stock. So the stock would be the stop would be right three, right around three thirty six. So we'll see if that happens. We'll follow through with it tomorrow to see if it actually worked or not. But uh, I would like to change that. If you if you if you'd like for me to not do that, I would be happy to. But I really like to change the format a little bit because I know you get tired of just looking at these charts. I don't, but I know you do. So anyway, that's it. We got a shame coming up here at the break, and uh, we'll see how uh, these things unfold. And uh, so that's it. I think we got a break. I think the old clock on the wall says the old music could start in a few seconds, and then we will move on to the next one. If you have any questions, folks, and right now uh, you can't call in because the line is just there, just filled up. 877-927-6648. Larry Pesavento watches the markets 24-7, and now is a great time to try out his daily trading service, Fibonacci 24-7. Larry publishes videos and charts for subscribers throughout the week when warranted, and every weekend he puts out a thorough report covering worldwide markets, futures, commodities, and currencies with Fibonacci retracement levels, possible trading setups and zones, and stops and targets for all recommendations included. Larry applies the principles he's developed over decades of trading while analyzing a variety of markets for subscribers. To see for yourself the types of videos, charts, and analysis that Larry provides for his subscribers, sign up for Fibonacci 24-7 today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. You'll also gain instant access to Larry's archived subscriber webinar from earlier this year. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed 
designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and we have as our guest today the wolf trader himself from Miami, Florida, Shane Smolian. How are you, my friend? Good morning. Is this the office of Duke and Duke? Actually, it is the secondary office of Duke and Duke. We moved operations out to Tucson until this coronavirus is finished in 2046. Hey, also tell us a little bit about the virus if you get a chance. Okay, uh, Shane? Okay, uh, the virus. Uh, I don't have a slide prepared, oh, no, but I can That's I can okay. Talk Just go ahead, give your regular show, and then I'll ask you a question at the end because so many people are talking about it, and you alerted us to this, uh, two, well, two, uh, two and a half months ago, what was going to happen, and it pretty much came out as you expected. So go ahead, take over, my friend. I'd sure. like for you to hear what the market is. Hey, folks are I can interested. Tell you, I can tell you we just surged over 7 million cases worldwide. Uh, so that is that's true, and it seems to be on a a pretty linear improvement. Uh, <clears throat> Florida's cases are surging, uh, even though testing is not increasing. So, but that, that's to be expected because people are coming back online. So, I mean, that's all. You know, we have to. It's it's a balance. You know, the more people come back online, the more cases you'll get. Um, okay, so we'll start with this slide here. Uh, this is the fear and greed index. And as Larry was pointing out to the to the listeners, uh, the, the call to put rate, the put to call ratio is, is very low. And this this one here is getting a little greedy. Uh, this fear and greed index. This is the one that CNN puts out, and is this is the first time it's actually elevated since the March lows, guys. Uh, it, the highest it had been was around 50, and it's actually pushing up around 69 now. Uh, which is, you know, for this rally, this is pretty high. Uh, it did get up to 99 before in January, but you know, this is get it's getting a little greedy out there for sure. Uh, this gives you a visual here of of how it's been tracing out. I mean, we're not back up to those highs that we saw in January, but it's definitely getting to an elevated level here. Uh, something to be concerned about. Definitely something to look at. Uh, this was the put to call ratio that Larry had pointed out. He, Larry sent me this chart uh, over the weekend, and the, you know the, this is this is definitely something to pay attention to. So, from a contrarian standpoint, we are at some you know some levels that are you would call extreme. Uh, definitely, uh, this was the lunar eclipse that occurred over the weekend, and I'm going to talk about the lunar eclipse uh, a little bit today. I did a webinar over the weekend on it on the YouTube channel, Wolf Trader Futures. You can go over and take a look at that. Uh, but essentially, th this full moon uh, occurred in the, uh, 15 degrees of Sagittarius and Gemini. And uh, this actually was making a very hard aspect to Mars here. So when it makes this hard aspect, uh, that's the signature of war, protests, riots. So that's exactly what we saw uh, in, the, in the week building up to this. So this was a very hard aspect uh, for the eclipse. And the eclipse made a shadow across uh, Africa, Europe, Saudi Arabia, Asia, Australia, and uh, the lunar, the solar eclipse that's going to come up will make will take a similar path. Uh, but the solar eclipse makes a much more sp specific uh, path because the moon is a smaller object, so it makes it a path like a laser beam as it moves across. But this one makes a wider shadow. Uh, these were the regions that were affected, and. Um, the S&P here, this is the chart of interest here because it's you've got a lot going on here. Uh, the Fed juice has really done a good job of modeling this rally. It's been in a buy since the 19th here. Uh, but I, I like to line up the planetary speed index with the Fed juice. So uh, essentially that stopped right here. And this market has been rallying against the planetary speed index. Uh, so this has really been a, a spot where I've just been out and just watching uh, I think it's kind of dangerous on both sides right now. Uh, the RSI has it just pushed to 92 this morning. Uh, that's really high for the S&P. So for people who don't realize, the S&P does not like to do that. 
Uh, this is not like copper, silver, or gold, where they, it runs up to these extremes all the time. That's very rare for the S&P. And when we get above 93%, the chance of reversal is very high on that. So, you know, this is definitely a point to where it's really getting kind of toppy. Now, normally, if we would not have had the eclipse, I probably would have gone long on the fourth at the close. This purple arrow here is the cat master signal. So for those of you who have been following, this is a new signal that combines multiple cycles, transits, statistics, and it's been giving very good results on many different markets. This actually did go long the day before that big surge up. However, because of the lunar eclipse, I was just being extra cautious on that. And I said, hey, look, I, I really think it's best just to wait on this. Uh, but if there wouldn't have been the lunar eclipse, I might have done it because the Fed juice was so powerful here and the Fed juice still is powerful. I'm still collecting the data for today. Uh, but you know, right now that's it's it's been picking this up beautifully. I mean, the Fed. If you follow the Fed, and you know, one of the mission statements of Wolf Trader Futures is we we make sense of markets. Okay, so I want people to look at the market and understand why it's doing what it's doing. Does it make sense? You know, a lot, if you look at it just from price action and where we were with the COVID, this doesn't make sense. But if you look at it from the Fed, it makes sense. If you look at it from the planetary speed index, it makes sense. So. That's really one of the things that I want to get get to people is that, you know, the mission here is to educate people and to, to make sense of markets for people. So uh, we're at a spot right now where the, the cat signal does go into a sell to close today. And I think based upon the lunar eclipses, I think that we have a good chance of uh, seeing some type of a modest pullback here. I think we're still in more of a bullish stance here on this market. But um this was a chart that I had sent to you, uh, you know, early in early June, and I, I could see the melt up was occurring. Uh, melt ups occur when the market starts to rally into falling astro cycles. So uh, that may sound contrary. Like, why would it? Why would that be the case? Well, be, when that's happening, typically what happens is there's so much energy coming into it on the buy side that it's overriding the down cycles, and then when it hits the up cycles, it can even go even higher. So I think this melt up may just be beginning i think we uh, i think that this could you know we th this may be the early stages of the melt up let me put it to you that way and i think once we hit those astro lows around the 12th i think it, i think it could really start to get overheated here but uh you know one week at a time i mean that's my philosophy is really to look only a little bit ahead of the time because i think when you try to start forecasting out you know weeks and months and years and it just really distorts your thoughts and then you become married to a concept and it just becomes difficult to be clear. So what I want to do is try to focus on getting this right. And, you know, from what I've found, the best way to do that is just to look one week at a time. So let's talk about lunar eclipses. So lunar eclipses are typically events that happen after the eclipse. OK, so I give the specifics in the newsletter about the exact bottoming dates. I put a chart up there. It's, it's on the website for subscribers. But you have, in astrology, you have two sides of an aspect. So these vertical lines here represent the eclipse. And before the aspect, uh, you, you get, it's called applying, which means it's building. And then after you get what's called separating, which means it's leaving. So when you have a singular event like this, uh, a lunar eclipse, I typically don't like singular events too much. This is why I use the planetary speed index, which is a, a, a multiple planets. But for things like this, it's important because a lunar eclipse, these are very significant effects. The market tends to fall. So this is the 1906 to 1907 bear market. And most of the time after this eclipse, you can see the market did fall. There was one time here where it didn't, but the rest of the time it fell after the lunar eclipses. And so this tends to be a very important, eclipses are important events, both lunar and solar. Uh, but uh, most of the time, the market does not respond well to lunar eclipses, particularly after. And the, the height of the spikes here represents the, the, the strength of the eclipse. Hey, we've got to take a break, my friend. Will you stay with us till after the break? Absolutely. Thank you. For Shane Smoy and Wolf Trader. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. 
The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus can contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. Okay, we're back, folks, with Shane Smolian, the Wolf Trader. Shane, you want to continue, please? Sure. So this is a lunar eclipse before the 1987 market crash. So this is interesting, too, that market crashes uh, tend to be important events. And so we see that you can look at this through many perspectives, like Mercury makes a station plus or minus three days before every single market crash. The planetary speed index was falling in the 1987 market crash. And then here we have the lunar eclipse right before the 1987 market crash. So uh, these lunar eclipses can be precursors to big declines in the markets, too. It doesn't just have to be small declines. Uh, but they tend to be there in the big the big ones, the big falls in the market. Uh, so these are exclamation points. So I think that's interesting because these really have nothing to do with each other, but yet they all show up on these big uh, events like market crashes. This is the 1990 market crash. Uh, and you can see here this lunar eclipse occurred here. And then, and then after the eclipse, we had the falling market uh, for many months in this case. Uh, so, you know, it, 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 it also depends upon where the, the solar eclipse is, which there's a solar eclipse coming up at the end of the month, and that tends to be a more bullish scenario. So we have to put the two of them together, and this is what I do in the newsletter. So uh, very quickly, for those of you who, who want this information, there's a free email list on the website. So make sure you go there and sign up. It's wolftraderfutures.com. And so just because you become a, a free member does not mean you get on this list. So I just want to clarify that to everybody. If you're interested in getting uh, information about webinars or things I do like this, I pr I'll probably do a webinar on the solar cycle coming up. Uh, okay, so getting back to the eclipses here. Uh, this is a, these are the lunar eclipses in the 1999 to 2000 top. And you can see here that we still had these sell-offs that occurred right after the eclipse also here. So in other words, it's not just during bear markets that this happens. It happens in bull markets, sideways markets, that these eclipses tend to be very important events for turning markets. Uh, so, you know, there's a good chance that we could see a modest pullback here in the next few days. 
uh, especially with these overbought levels. And, and I wanted just to show you here, too, that even in a bull market, when you have a market that's surging like this, that these eclipses can at least turn the market for a few days uh, to the downside. So it turns it in bear markets, it turns it in sideways markets, and it turns it in bull markets. These are important events. Okay, so Shane, when that stuff, Shane, we've got a question from one of our listeners. I hate to interrupt you, but uh, sure. the question is, yeah, you know, th these these is incredible. The, the numbers that you're looking at. What do you use, or can you tell us how? If you see a trigger, what's your trigger mechanism saying? Yes, this is it. Do you have a specific price or a time that you're looking at? Uh, how, how is it that you decide whether to go long or short? And I want to compliment you on the melt up because you did tell us this a month ago that this market had all earmarks of melting up and it certainly well i don't know if it's done melting but it's had one heck of a run thank you yeah um so, that that's a great question i have a i have a logic tree that i follow i follow a very consistent process so what i do is i i line up the the fed juice with the planetary speed index so the the fed juice is here so this is on 518 it went into a buy it's still in a buy with the planetary speed index here which was on 519 so there was this run here and then i've been sitting out this this recent run up here now if i want to get aggressive okay i might take the fed juice is number one okay that's the number one thing to look at the number two is the planetary speed index if i want to get aggressive i might use the cat master signal with that that'd be number two in that case that would have been long on friday but i want to make it clear i wasn't long on friday because of the eclipse i was concerned about it and i just kind of decided to stay Stay clear of that, even though we had that big one day rip on the market, um, you know, that that's the decision process. So I follow a very consistent pattern with this. I'm not just looking at it and saying, oh, my God, it looks like a top here. I think I should. No, it's a very logical process that I follow. And so sometimes you miss moves, too. I mean, that's just part of it. But the, the idea is that you're just consistent with what you do. Uh, so I hope that answers the question. I, I can do a, a webinar on that, too. Uh, if people want to talk about that. This is the 2008, getting back to the lunar eclipses. This is the 2008 financial crisis. So you can see that in 2007, we had an eclipse in the summer. It just went sideways. But each time we had an eclipse in 2008, it did begin to sell off. And it, it was there once again before the biggest meltdown. Uh, the eclipse was there uh, to mark that the start of that biggest meltdown. And then even when we had a smaller eclipse here, it tended, it still had a meltdown in, and that meltdown was the last meltdown into these March lows. And this is where the QE really started, QE1. Technically, we had a QE0 out here, for those of you who want to be Fed nerds. But the real QE started here. Uh, but, you know, these these are important. And so these are, you know, this this stuff matters. And, I, I know, and one of the things I just want to tell people is, look, you know, when you look at the numbers, when you look at the data, this stuff matters okay it matters and, and and you need to pay attention to it because uh they tend these these tend to show up around major turns okay and in 2011 2012 um you know it had two failures in in the middle here in 2011 but before that you had and again sell-offs here after the lunar eclipse so this is this is a pattern that repeats and repeats. It doesn't always work. I'm picking some good examples here, but statistically, it does it does tend to show declines. And um, here's another one: 2017 to 2018. This one had uh, a really interesting combination of cases. Here we had sideways market where it went down. Here uh, we had a big decline here in the 2018 that January. There was an eclipse right before that. Uh, in the bull run here, it did have a tiny pullback here. In the bull run here, it just went kind of sideways. So, uh, the idea there is just to show you that this isn't this is an important pattern, and and the solar eclipse is important too. And the order that they occur is important. So, uh, these tend to occur in pairs because the Earth lines up perfectly with the Moon at the same time. So, um, the lunar eclipse is the full Moon. Solar eclipse is the new Moon. And when it occurs in this order, it tends to be more bullish. And that's what's happening now. So we're in more of a bullish scenario because the lunar comes in with the low and the solar tends to rally. Uh, but the specific days and turning points and all of that, I put that on the, the website uh, with the newsletter so uh, subscribers can go there. And I, when I send out emails now, I also I'm putting them on the website as an archive so you guys can see that if you sign up uh, kind of late in the game here. 
So I, I know I'm rushing through those slides, but this is the Fed here. And so one of the reasons why I've always been bullish on this market uh, is because I follow what the Fed is doing. And the Fed has always been persistently giving us the same message here that they're going to just continue to ramp up the juice here on the markets. And on 320, I did put out a tweet. It's still there. I put out a tweet that says I expect a full recovery, full recovery in the market. Uh, and a lot of that is the Fed. But I also believe in the country and I believe that we will overcome uh, this virus and and also the political and the civil unrest that's going on now. I think we'll overcome all of this and be, be stronger for it. And I think that uh, when this Fed juice gets really when the, when the S&P uh, gets low in terms of the Fed juice, which you see down here. OK, so I have an indicator down here that shows you when the market is at extreme values in relation to the Fed juice. It tends to have bull markets for multiple years. So I know that that flies in the face of the extreme sentiment, all the stuff that we're seeing. But on the long term, I'm definitely still bullish here. Uh, and if it continues to do what it has been doing every time it hits these extreme values like this, you tend to get a multi-year bull market. So uh, I, I think the chances are pretty good of that. I know to people that might look completely crazy to say there's no way, it's impossible. But just based on the research that I've done, that's what happens. Oh. Well, you're putting it on the line, my friends. Listen, thanks for joining us, and we'll have you on again soon, okay? Thanks, Larry. Thank you, folks. Shane Smolian, Wolf Trader. Dot com. Anyway, folks, we'll be right back. Back in the day, I joined Hotel California in 2006, and like many of you, was drawn in by, as well as, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. You see, I believe that everything in life happens for us, not to us. And Tom ignited the fire within me to want to learn how to master the markets. So how did I go from knowing nothing about technical analysis to becoming the number one market timer for the S&P 500 in 2018 and the number two market timer in 2019? Simply put, I hired coaches with a proven track record, which led me to a whole new set of tools that I created to interpret the message of buyers and sellers. I would love the opportunity to teach you this award-winning set of tools and to help you improve your market timing. You can test drive my newsletter service, Mastering Probabilities, for the next 30 days with no risk to you. Plus, you'll gain access to archive workshops that'll take you step-by-step -step through my system. Sign up today by going to the homepage of tfnn.com and selecting Mastering Probability in the newsletter tab. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Markets trading with extreme volatility and peaks and troughs everywhere, regardless of what you're looking at in the markets. This is a great time to see the type of analysis Basil Chapman delivers for his subscribers every market day with the opening call newsletter. Basil has been analyzing markets, providing his take for subscribers to his trading services since 1984. Every morning, Basil publishes an update for his subscribers, along with weekend and evening updates when warranted. The opening call provides traders a daily market overview with regard to the the direction of the key indices, selective stocks and commodities, along with specific recommendations, including stops and targets. You also gain instant access to Basil's subscriber webinar archive from earlier this year, a dark cloud cover and essential market analysis. Ride the Chapman wave today by signing up for the opening call newsletter on the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. New subscribers get a 30 day money back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Okay, folks, one of the most important things that I happened to look at this morning was when you look at markets, you know, you try to find something that is an aberration of what usually is happening. I posted the chart of the heating oil. I did this, of course, for uh, the 24-7 folks but uh, and the newsletter folks. But you'll notice that the heating oil made a 382 retracement uh, this morning. Uh, actually, it was really early this morning. And uh, it got up to that uh, 117 level. And now we've we backed off quite a bit uh, from that level already. Now, that tells you that the heating oil is still in a major bear market. Now, with the crude oil, we went up and we filled that gap that we left way back in April. That's another thing that we're looking at. So there's a strong probability that crude oil is getting ready to roll over. Right now, we're down about a buck and a quarter from uh, from the highs, and we made a small ABCD here. But that's what I look at when I'm watching you know, market statistics or market information. The market's telling you certain information. With these charts, basically, I look at you know where the buying and selling has occurred, and I try to look at that. And that's pretty much what uh, trading is all about. We'll take a quick look here at Apple. We'll see if we're going to have any chance to get filled at that level. And uh, let's see, we were seeing 333. We got up to uh, 331.35. Uh, that is the opening price. So uh, 330.75 is where it opened. It's trading right there at 385. Uh, our 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 price objective would have been 332.90, and whether that happens or not, we'll follow through with it tomorrow to see if it's going to uh, it's going to look at it. But right now, we're trading right at the opening. If we if we go below 329 today, uh, that would be a sell on using the opening price because you would be believe it, below the open. You only have to risk two dollars on that stock if you wanted to do it then, and that that's if the market you know reverses exactly at that spot. And we don't know whether that's going to happen. But you know what else? Folks? Folks, nobody else does either. Uh, I'll answer the question. Well, well, the next question, someone's, why don't I use uh, oscillators and, and moving averages and stuff? I, I, they, they're just hard for me to understand, folks. I can understand a bar chart. I can understand a pattern. And that's basically, that's all I'm looking for is a small edge. And sometimes it gives it to you. Sometimes it don't. There's other, Mark, remember, the NASDAQ is acting weaker. And that used to be the big daddy rabbit. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude. And may God bless. Thank you.